Welcome back to your 2010 Iowa State football preview. I'm Natalie Taylor here in the Ryman Gardens on the campus of Iowa State. Coach Paul Rhodes was the first head coach to post a winning season his first year here at Iowa State since 1931. And any great storybook has a great author, and Coach Rhodes is just that. So we wanted to find out what's he thinking on the upcoming season. Well, here he is. We were going to win a bowl game. That was the expectation of the 2009 Cyclone football team. As the year went along, uh, that pressure mounted a little bit. And then at the end of it, when we accomplished it, I was asked, did you really believe that you could get that done? And my response to that is it didn't matter. What mattered was that we set the bar high and the kids worked to achieve those expectations that we set and that's exactly what got accomplished. There was so much emotion that went into that game in that week and, and uh, it just spilled out of everybody in, in that post-game locker room. Uh, but the list is long. Starting quarterback out, starting tailback out. We had a player break his leg during a game and he, he ran back on the field a minimum of three times in the first half thinking he had a charley horse. Uh, X-rayed him at halftime and he had a broken leg. We had a number of players that, that had IVs at halftime. We're talking to the team, they're behind curtains on the other side getting, getting IVs. We brought over extra vehicles with players with surgical masks on uh, because they were, they were coming down with the flu. We sat down to dinner that Friday night at the hotel and I'm telling you, a guy would start coughing and walk to the trainer and they'd take his temperature and he was gone. Trainer would get back and another player would walk up and, and, and a fever had struck and, and they were gone. It was just that kind of emotional rot week and, and uh, uh, the peak of it was the victory. The victory ended 32 years of, of, of drought in, in, in Lincoln, Nebraska and Memorial Stadium. So we, we had good reason to be excited after that game and, and I, I don't think that catapulted us any, anywhere. Um, but it, but it gave us the mindset that, that we can accomplish uh, a lot of things if we, if we remain together as a football team. The, the bowl win is, is very powerful. Uh, we're 6-6, six and six, and yeah, we'd improve greatly on what had been accomplished the, the two previous seasons. But you're 6-6, six and, six and, and you don't win the bowl game. I think it just leaves it where, okay, they're making improvement, things are going in the right direction. You win the bowl game and you just launch forward with everything you're doing. When our kids got back in the weight room in January, it was, it was full speed ahead. There was an energy and an enthusiasm about them greater than it was a year ago when, when, the, impro when the program was entirely new. Uh, the attendance at the spring game. Uh, this was my seventh spring game at Iowa State and I've never seen uh, attendance numbers this high. Ticket sales are good. When we go out on the road for what we refer to as our Cyclone tailgate tours, uh, uh, people are excited, the, the, the numbers are big, and, and uh, there's a lot of buzz around our program right now that's, that's created by the, by the bowl victory in the seven win season in year one. Our yardage output will be up, our, our, our point output will be up, um, and, and I can say that uh, with, with great confidence based on what I saw take place this spring compared to last fall, uh, even compared to the bowl game. We were a better outfit in the springtime than we were in the bowl game. Uh, you got a returning quarterback who understands the offense much better. You got a returning quarterback whose mechanics are the, are the best they've ever been. You got a returning tailback who I think is as good as there is in the Big 12. I know a lot of people don't give him that credit, but I certainly do. A veteran offensive line returns, uh, and we add a couple players to that that are either growing up or, or coming off redshirt seasons. And, and I think our, our offensive weapons at, at uh, receiver and tight end will be much improved. Uh, all that adds up to more points on the scoreboard, at least it, it'd be better. Austin has to play well. He has, to, he has to play improved and he has to play well. Uh, he didn't do that all the time last year. He, he realizes that and, and that's why he, he emerged from spring ball as our most improved player. Uh, and, and defensively, we, we've, got a, uh, we've got to do exactly what I, I, I hope for and that's noticeably improved from, from week one to week 12. We're inexperienced, we're young on that side of the ball, so we're going to have to work to, to get that done. But I think it's a, a group that you'll see improve noticeably week after week as the season rolls along. Anytime I walked into an area where the football team was working out, there, there was no individuality to be seen. It was all about the team. I, I think that's the soul of our group. We, we've got elected captains. We certainly have guys that are leaders. Uh, they know we've got some good players and Alexander Robinson and Austin Arnott and David Sims and so forth. Uh, but the strength of, of what we're going to accomplish lies within the team.
Thanks, Coach. Some of you may remember the video of Coach Rhodes' post-game speech after that win in Nebraska. Well, a lot of you probably do because it became a national highlight. It was viewed over 235,000 times on the internet by season's end. Well, stay right there, you Cyclone fans, because we have plenty more coming up. This is your 2010 Iowa State football preview. Don't go away. You'll want to hear what Paul Kaufman and Ron Freeman have to say about this year's Cyclones. Welcome back to the Iowa State football preview. From the campus in Ames, once again, here's Natalie Taylor. Now, we've already heard from the head man and some of his star players, but what's the next chapter for Cyclone football going to look like? Well, guess what? We have two football analysts to tell you their thoughts. Here's Paul Kaufman and Ron Freeman. You know, Paul Rhodes did an amazing job at Iowa State in, in, in returning, building confidence in the team and, and telling them, you know, in virtually their first meeting that we're going to a bowl game. And I think that was just a whole change of attitude in that Iowa State team that, you know, we got a guy that believes in us here. Yeah. And, and it, it carried on into the season, the enthusiasm. Uh, you know, how many hits on YouTube did, you know, Paul sure. Rhodes' speech get after the win in Nebraska? Sure. You know, I mean, it, it brings tears to your eyes to watch it. And yeah. just the enthusiasm, the love he has for his team, and, and the love that he has for Iowa State. Well, you, you think about that. You come into a program that's been down, that's struggled in a division where Nebraska, Missouri, KU have dominated. Uh, for a long time, Nebraska in particular, 32 years, they dominated Iowa State. And to think that you'd step into a meeting with your team and you say, guys, here's what we're going to do. And I think it speaks a lot to him as a head coach, a lot to his players, as uh, they responded to that message, said, yeah, we can't, let's do this. And they went out and they did something really remarkable and ended up winning a bowl game. You know, that's something they got to build on is, you know, hey, we took our team to a bowl, we won the game. You know, in recruiting now, you know they're they're going after a higher level athlete than they've been able to go after in the past, and uh, it's going to build. And Paul Rhodes' enthusiasm is what sparks it. You know, he's a guy that grew up in Ankeny, Iowa, and the high school coaches they're on board with him. You know, he's going to sew up the borders. He's going to get the state of Iowa, sure, you know, <laughs> out of Iowa well. City. Yeah, you know, and, sure. and into Ames. Well, and, and that's the challenge, right? There's that Iowa City. You have a program there, and, and but the recruiting has become so national, and the fact that they were able to have some success in 2009 says to kids outside of Iowa, kids outside of the Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas area, that hey, you know what? There's a program in, in Ames that we might take a serious look at. They've got some players. You know, you got David Sims, their safety from uh, from Florida, who's a, a player. And you think guys that come from outside, again, that's where you're, you're going to have to make it. You're, I don't think, no disrespect to Iowa, but population-wise, you just don't have the numbers to really get the kind of kid that's going to be able to compete year after year at that level. And right. Defensively, you know, they, I, I think, four or five starters, you know, that are coming back. Yeah. So th that is the key to this season. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, we'll talk about offense, you know, in a little bit. But I think right now, defensively, Iowa State, needs to be able to stop the run. They need to be able to stop the spread offenses sure. uh, that KU, Missouri will run. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that's the challenge for them this year. If sure. they can step up defensively, if they can find yeah. some replacements, uh, yeah. th they're going to be good. Yeah, well, you, got, you lose three linebackers, three very productive linebackers, Jesse Smith being the key one. But you think about what the defense is all about. And, and I'm a big believer in that the, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. You get more out of a team than you do out of a bunch of individuals. And I think that's one of the real keys to Paul Rhodes' effectiveness is that he's able to go in and motivate and to bring, bring their level of play up here instead of accepting kind of being a lower tier program. And I think as a result of that, you're going to see a team that does play well I, on the defensive side of the ball. Now they've got guys there I'm sure that they, they feel like they're going to be able to play with, but they've got to step into roles that were you know, really handled by great linebackers. So I, I think if you get that accomplished, uh, they could do very well. But offensively, they've got to score points. Yeah, and, and that's something that they're going to do. Uh, Tom Herman, their offensive coordinator, came from Rice. You know, they spread it out, they, they throw it all over the field is, is what you expect. They got the option of running it too, and Austin Arnaud, the quarterback. Yeah, the I mean, quarterback. He, I think, what is this, his sixth, seventh year? <laughs> it seems, seems like he's been there a while. We've been talking about Austin for a long time, and, and he's matured as a player. 
He's stepping into his senior year leadership role, did a fantastic job last year. Sure. And, uh, you know, he gives them that option to run. Tough, yeah. tough quarterback. And, uh, you know, they're going to spread it out. They're going to sure. throw it around. But they also got that ability to run. What they didn't do well in 2009 that they'll need to do in 2010, they've got to finish. Too many times drive stalled in the red zone. You end up going for a field goal or no points at all. And at the end of the day, that, that'll cost you games. They were right there last year to having a, you know, they had a good season, but sure. just having a great season. And I think that enthusiasm is going to build. And they're a team that, that's, that's on the rise. And I think everyone in the Big 12 North and the Big 12 South that they play uh, is going to have to watch out for Iowa State. Thanks, guys. And Cyclone fans are wondering, will this season have another happy ending? Only time will tell. But that will do it for our trip to Ames. So for Dave Armstrong, Paul Kaufman, and Ron Freeman, I'm Natalie Taylor. And thanks for watching your 2010 Iowa State football preview.